So I often get asked, what's a good entry watch? What's a good first watch to purchase? And my response in my mind is always, there's no straightforward answer. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through my thought process on this question. It's something you guys would enjoy. So remember guys to give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet, and let's get into this video. So guys, before I get into the video, let's just do a wristwatch check. And today I'm wearing my Mega Constellation 168.005 with the original pie pan dial. The timepiece is all original with the original bracelet, original crown, and it's in perfect condition in my eyes. Well, except for the scratch at the five o'clock. But besides that, everything is perfect to me. Now, like I said in the intro, when it comes to an intro timepiece, it's not a straightforward answer. So let's get into it. So there's a few things to consider. And my first thought is that when it comes to your first timepiece, it really doesn't matter all depending on your budget. It's about what you can afford at that specific time. So your first timepiece could be a Seiko all the way up to F. P. Jean. It just really doesn't matter. It's all about what you feel comfortable financially affording at that time. There's really no safety concerns when it comes to purchasing a timepiece like it is when you're purchasing a car. Now with a car, you need experience, but with a timepiece, all you really need is knowledge. You need to know all the different functionalities that's out there that's gonna tailor and fit your lifestyle. So just because you hear about people purchasing Rolex Submariners doesn't mean that a Rolex Submariner is right for you. There's GMT functions, there's chronograph functions, of course, there's time only functions, there's date and day functions, there's moon phases, there's all different types of watches out there. So you need to do your research, do your homework and find out what would fit your lifestyle. The one thing I would add when it comes to picking a functionality is that understanding that the service cost will vary depending on the functionality of that timepiece. So if it's a watch that's time only, the service cost would be on the lesser side. But let's just say it's a chronograph function or a minute repeater or something of a high complication. The price just goes up when it comes to servicing because once something goes wrong with the timepiece, which it probably will at some point, you'll have to service it and the bill will be expensive. Another thought when someone asks me, what's a good first watch? I think about vintage, which is the space that I enjoy. I love vintage timepieces. And I asked myself, is a vintage watch a good first watch? And my mind just goes yes and no. Because yes, a good vintage watch, a watch that has a, a good service history in decent condition would make a good first watch. But if it's a watch that, you know, the service history is poor, the condition is poor, the case is over polished. Yes, it's a watch, you can wear it. It's a first watch, okay. Hopefully you got it cheap if it's in poor condition, but that's not a good example and a good start to your watch journey. Yes, in our, in our watch journey, we make mistakes and, and mistakes happen and we learn from them and it's, it's, it's good at times. But your first watch, if it's a vintage timepiece, you want it to be right, you want it to be correct. And I believe there's gonna be a lot more research needing to go into purchasing a vintage timepiece than when it goes into purchasing a new modern timepiece. The one problem when you go into the modern space is now worrying about whether or not the watch is authentic. But on the vintage side, you have to worry if the watch has all original parts or if it's a Franken watch where maybe the hands are different or from a different watch. Uh, there, there's all different things to consider. So in all honesty, a vintage watch, yes, can make a good, great first watch, but there's things to also consider once you're going down that alley. I'm thinking right now on the last time I was asked, what's a good first watch? And my answer was just straight. Actually, I was just like, Tudor Black Bay 58. And that was just because that's what I would buy myself right now if I had to purchase a first watch today. And the reason why I pointed out this watch to this particular person was because, of course, I love vintage and the Tudor Black Bay 58 gives that vintage aesthetics, but it's a modern watch that's 
going to be able to withstand the beating that you know I'm going to put it through on a daily basis. It's a great daily timepiece. It's a watch you can wear every day. It's stainless steel, so it could go with everything. You don't have to worry about having it be, since it's, if a yellow gold timepiece may be hard to wear with certain outfits on different occasions, it's a stainless steel piece with a black dial that's just simple and could go with everything. And the price, of course, is an entry level price, I think, for most people. I don't know, today it's hard to honestly say what most people are able to afford or willing to pay due to the economic climate, but in the broad scheme of things outside of this economic climate that we're in, I think 3000 is a decent entry level price for a first luxury timepiece. You got the money, he got money, get it all for him. So that was my answer to that person. And it, it changes over time. You know, sometimes I would say a Datejust. Sometimes I would say a Rolex Submariner. Sometimes I would say a Seiko. Sometimes I would say an Omega Speedmaster. Just as, it depends on the person too. If I could kind of see what they're about, their lifestyle, the size of the person, I would kind of, uh, you know, aim the person down a certain avenue um, based on certain factors. So if there's anything you take away from this video, it's that you need to just do your homework, do your research. Yes, it's okay to ask someone what's a good entry level, what's a good first watch, because it's always good to get advice. But it all boils down to what fits you, what you love, what you're going to enjoy looking down at on your wrist throughout the day. Yes, I could give you my opinion, but... My opinion might not be what fits you in your mind and your perspective of what you like to look at. So do your homework, do your research, go on YouTube, you know, stay on my channel, check out, subscribe if you haven't, like I said, subscribe and you'll see all my videos where I give my perspective on it. I tell you guys a lot to like go out there and actually get your hands on the timepiece that you're interested in. Don't just look at it online on Instagram facebook whatever the case may be and think that oh let me just order it and have it shipped and i'm gonna put it on and enjoy it yes that's possible where you could just see something online buy it and put it on your wrist and it just the, the match is there but the likelihood of that happening sometimes is, is slim so i do recommend of course going to a local watchmaker or a watch dealer and seeing his inventory trying to watch his on you don't even have to purchase on the first time visiting. You could go once, have a good conversation. A good watch dealer, a great watch dealer understands that it takes time when it comes to purchasing a timepiece, especially once you're spending thousands of dollars. A bad watch dealer is one that's going to be forcing a timepiece on you, wanting you to purchase it right then. There, And it's just not something that you're going to enjoy, that, that experience. So don't feel uncomfortable going into a watch dealer in a store and taking your time to go through the timepieces that catches your eye because it's a different thing from something that catches your eye than something that's on your wrist and then enjoying it on a monthly basis on a weekly basis however how often you like to wear your timepiece that's just pretty much my thought process when it comes to buying a watch in general but when it comes to your first watch definitely guys take your time do your homework uh, watch my YouTube videos and you're going to learn a thing or two when it comes to watches and the watches that you're going to enjoy. So guys, I'm going to leave it here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Remember, give the video a thumbs up, share it, subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below, whatever come across your mind throughout this video. Share also what was your first timepiece. I think that might help other people to see, you know, what may work for them. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.